What's up, everybody? This is Ricardo Rodriguez. And Matthew Messick. And this is the Profits Over Wages Podcast. Welcome to episode two of the Profits Over Wages Podcast. Our guest today is George Aguapo Cuevas. He's a former realtor and now trains realtors on how to market their brand and listings online. He's also a real estate photographer, videographer, blogger, author, speaker, and host of his own podcast, The Margaritas and Real Estate Marketing Show. In today's episode, we talk about how to spot real estate marketing trends and buyer behavior patterns, building a brand as a broker, and how new technology is like virtual staging and Matterport. Enjoy the show. So you know, I've been inside, I've been excited for a while uh, to have you on the podcast because um, I'm a huge fan not only of your photography but like since the first time we met, you came and spoke at our event, uh, the Chicago Real Estate Mastermind Group, and uh, we got a lot of feedback that time when you came and spoke about kind of like we were saying before here, like a lot of brokers don't really know how to market the properties, and we got a lot of I got a lot of feedback from people saying, oh shit, I've never heard that before. Um, So I kind of just, you know, before we kind of get started more into the podcast, I wanted to ask you like how you made that transition or why you made that transition from being a real estate agent to being, you know, a real estate marketer and kind of going back and teaching agents how to market that correct way. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, and thanks for having me on your show. This is really awesome. Um, I, I, I've never, I've only been on one or two other podcasts before, you know, I got my own. So it's, I love doing this part of it. But um, I guess when it comes to like how I started doing this was that I, I was a real estate agent and I was a managing broker of an office. And I got into real estate after I got out of the army, came back home. A lot of veterans, you kind of like don't know where, what to do next as a civilian. And so I spent about a year trying to figure that out. And I kind of fell on real estate. And this, the year was like 2007, 2008, right before the crash. And it was um, in September, I think it's 2007. I think it's 2007, maybe 2008, but it's, it's right when the crash was about to go down and George Bush gets on TV and says, this is like in the last months of his presidency, we're gonna have to bail out the banks and go through this huge bailout if we want to save basically the world because the whole financial world was about to collapse on itself. Right. And so when I heard that, I was at home uh, and I was watching that on TV and then I knew that that's when we had to go into real estate. So like I knew like there's going to be this whole industry is about to be turned upside down. And that means for me, that meant there's going to be a lot of opportunity here. Getting in from the ground up, essentially. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah there, because everything was the whole for in for real estate agents, for brokerages, for investors, for everyone that was in the business up until that point, their whole world was about to turn upside down. And whenever you have turmoil like that, that's where the opportunities are always lying at. So um, I got my, I, that's when I like said, okay, I'm doing this. I got my license. And then, um, you know, when I told everybody what I was doing and, and you know, after that, after Bush gave that thing there um, for the months leading up and then right into, right into the election season, that's when we really saw the foreclosure crisis just, I mean, it started taking this life of its own where we just started seeing record foreclosures every month coming and we saw property values dropping for like two years after that you know so um a lot of people would come up to me and they'll say oh my god george like are you sure is this ptsd like what's going on like you know like you know are why you sure are you, you want to get into yeah, real estate yeah, right they're, now they're thinking i was crazy you know because uh people would literally put their hands on my shoulder and be like are you okay and um uh but the fact of the matter is that we got right into short sales and foreclosures right at the beginning and because that's where we saw the opportunity and we I didn't know anything about real estate in terms of foreclosures or short sales but we taught ourselves we built a team and uh, during the 2000 from 2008 to about 2011 uh, we closed about 2,000 short sales and we did about 500 REOs and so we did like a shit ton can I swear yeah, go <laughs> yeah. Ahead. Yeah. We did a shit ton of, of, of inventory and turning properties over. And, um, uh, and I think we did it the right way. We, we were always really good with uh, the sellers because if you represent a seller on a short sale, they're going through a very stressful time in their life. Their whole life is being turned upside down. Yeah, I know a few people that went through that. And it's, I mean, 
one of my aunts went through that and we didn't hear from her for maybe a year or two i mean even after the short sale went through and that whole thing got over it's just something that most people don't really want to talk about yeah it, it destroys families and stuff so you have to um you have to put an extra level of care to those homeowners because of that uh they need more help i mean i I've had times where I have to pay for the movers to get out, uh, uh, for them to get out of the house, you know, uh, because they didn't, they literally didn't have the means to do that. So we did that. And from the very first day we started doing short sales and REOs, I knew that this wasn't going to last forever. I knew that there was going to be a time when this foreclosure crisis was going to bottom out. And then once we bottom out, that's when we would start rising out of it. So I studied the market every day. I read, um, uh, every quarter, the uh, finance, the Federal Reserve comes out with quarterly reports from every Federal Reserve bank or district or whatever, and I would read those quarterly reports because they would because they had a real estate section in there, and in that real estate section, they would say this is what's going on in the St. Louis region, and this is what's going on in this region, and they would talk about you know what's going on with inventories and sales numbers and that, and then I would um, uh, I, I would go to every I would look at uh, states and cities and look at their list pendants and foreclosure rates. And I would follow that. And what I was looking for was um, I was calculating all this data and waiting to see a trend. And a trend starts with six months of, of something happening in a row. And we first started seeing uh, Southern California and Phoenix start to turn first. Those markets uh, flattened out. And when they flattened out and we saw the very first price appreciations in those markets, then that's when I knew. That shit starting over there. It's just a matter of time till that shit starts over here. When did that happen? When did, that, do you remember? It's it, that's in that 2011, 2012 ish. I, I remember correctly. It's somewhere in there, maybe 2013. But but yeah, it's right around that time period when we first started to see the first signs of recovery. And I, and like I said, I waited for six months when I started seeing Liz Pendens rates drop, and I started seeing like sa sales activity actually never really slowed down during the foreclosure crisis because there were a lot of people buying up all these foreclosures. But smart uh, people. Right, smart or people that just weren't affected by it and, and, and didn't lose everything in the crash. So uh, as soon as that started happening, then that's when I started focusing on, okay, what's the next thing? You know, like wh where do we, where are we gonna put ourselves so that we don't end up out of business when short sales end? And to me, what, I, what happened is I thought it was gonna be marketing. Um, how buyers and sellers buy and sell homes, how they find homes, has completely changed since oh, 2007, yeah. 2008. It's a complete turnaround. It's an upside down, as big as an upside down as it was when the real estate market changed in 2007, 2008, from, from like anything could sell if you had a, a social security number to nothing would sell unless you had cash or like super duper 900 credit score type stuff. And, and so like, I saw that it was it was marketing was where we had to be, and more specifically, it was listings marketing. I knew that once the foreclosure crisis, once we were going to get out of that, it was going to be listings is it was going to be key, which which has always been the predominant thing that most agents want. Listings are the key to growing your business as an agent, um, and so we focus on listings. And as we got into that, we realized that buyers were no longer going to the realtor to find the property yeah, they're looking online mm -hmm. they're look going online and we saw this happening all the time we we were finding people we were finding our buyers find their own listings and at first you you kind of call you hey i'm interested in yeah. this house can yeah. you take me yeah and, 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 and for yeah it, it, that's what was happening and at first i kind of felt and all of us i think all realtors at first kind of felt like whoa 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 why are you going to Trulia or Zillow or Redfin or one of these other websites? And why are you not going to my data? And as soon as I started talking to our clients, and, and this is part of what you do in, in marketing is you, 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 it's all behaviors. And so we started following what our buyers were doing, what our sellers were doing. And I started asking more questions and it became really clear to me that everything was shifting online. So then that's the moment. And that, I guess if you round this whole thing up, I knew that we had the pivot point again. And then that's when we started to create what we're going to get into now is the listings marketing plan. Right. Because you, like, if people are looking at listings online, you have to present, present them in a way that's like, like it pops, that they feel like they have to go see it. Yes. And that's kind of where, you know, when you started, I guess you started doing photography and videos. And yeah. Yeah. yeah well, what we found is that 
uh, we say that the first showing takes place online. Whereas before, the first showing took place at the showing, at the listing, at the actual right. house. And so, like, what you're saying is that I, I didn't do photography work or even make a video before, but I started seeing that if the people were going to find it online, we had to present the property visually, and we had to stimulate them to see in these properties so that it would encourage them to come see it, uh, similar to online dating. Right. <laughs> so like it's so like an online dating. We put our like oh, I'm not I'm I'm right. You gotta I'm, put your yeah. best best. You put uh, your best picture. First, right. You know your first tender tender picture or bumble picture's gotta be your best. That's one. your best picture, right? Right. 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 Best picture you ever <laughs> took. <laughs> <laughs> but then if you now now it, but it works reverse too. If you put a picture like if I were to put a picture of when I got run up where when I got in the army when I was in the best shape of my life and obviously like I'm not at that shape right now but if I was but if I was I'm not single now but if I was single and I put an army picture in there and I'm not in the army anymore and like 40 pounds heavier like that and and then you go meet the person you know that that date may has a really good chance of not getting very far trust me that still happens now <laughs> So, no, but I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. it needs to be pre- it presented well. It needs to be presented well, and, and so like accurately, right? And, and I mean, to be honest, dude, I'm still seeing even today cell phone like, pictures, cell phone pictures. Oh yeah, like yeah, bad ones happens every day. Not even like just a cell phone picture, but a an, an iPhone or an Android phone with a cheap like fish eye lens attached to it, yeah. and it's yeah. just bad lighting. You can't even tell. Like, I mean, it's it's. I'm still seeing that, and it's terrible. Yeah. So I kind of I kind of want to use that as a segue into like what it is that you're doing now, training. Because you do trainings, right? You yeah. do public speaking. You yep. train realtors on how to market their listings properly. Mm-hmm. Well, and and I do that now because there wasn't that kind of data or that kind of information. I I just didn't see out there. So when we started uh, to try to learn how to how to properly market a listing online I tried to go find you know marketing classes and I tried to go for, to the real estate associations and and the MLS's and everything else to try to find training on this and what I found was like I, I didn't see anyone really teaching it I saw people kind of talking about it I saw a lot of people selling stuff about it so there's all sorts of systems and apps and technology that you could buy out there. But none of these were really practical solutions that solved that problem, which was you have to, you know, you have to find a way to uh, visually show these listings online and make sure that they're in the places that people can actually find them. So um, I did something at, that, at this point now. Um, I started to get deep into it. When I found that there was nothing out there, then what I did is... Um, I spent about a year, uh, and this is this is a part of my life that was really sucked. But this is how into it I got. I moved back home to my parents' house, lived in the basement for a year because I told myself I'm not going to sell any real estate until I figure this thing out. And when I come out of this basement, <laughs> and and like you know, and, and all during all this time, I had a group of agents that were working under us. And what I did was that um, I just focused on their listings. And they were like my guinea pigs. Their listings were my guinea pigs in my laboratory. And for a year, all nice. we did is run experiments. So that's why I lived in my parents' house. Because like, I needed to save every dollar I could because I was just trying to learn how to do this. Originally, I thought it would only take like six months or something like that. I ended up spending about a year. But when we finished all the experiments, we started with the very first version of the listings marketing plan. Nice. What, do, um, what does that entail? So... The listings marketing plan, which I'll share with you guys, or I guess we're going to get into, is a very simple, straightforward, and practical approach to how I believe a real estate agent or a real estate investor should market their listing. And it doesn't involve buying software or pieces of technology. It's just using the tools that are available to anyone out there today and really putting a set of standard operating procedures into executing something that that I, I believe works, and and it's been I think you guys have tried it. Um, a, a lot, all my clients use it today. I have a lot of real estate investors that use it, and the best part about it is that it's an organic, fluid type of system. Um, things change in marketing, and especially in marketing today, technology changes, and has that has these changes happen, we make changes to the to the marketing plan uh, accordingly. I feel like a lot of those things are obvious, though, like having really good pictures. Mm-hmm. Like, to me, they're obvious things. Yeah. Because, I mean, the way I see it is, actually, my girlfriend's looking for a place right now, and she looks 
she sends me Redfin links all the time. She doesn't yeah. even go to open houses. She doesn't yeah. even, con- she doesn't even have a broker, and she's sending me links. Oh hey, I like this house. Hey, look at the pictures on this one. So yeah. it's to me that's like an obvious thing for most people nowadays where they sit in their living room and just look through Redfin yeah. all day. Yeah. Well, it, it, you're right. It, it should be obvious, and and that's the thing. Marketing doesn't have to be complicated. To me, every and the world to me is white and black. You know, or Mexican and white, <laughs> but 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 everything is everything is simple if you make it if you let it be simple. And in marketing, uh, you know, a, this listing's marketing plan or any kind of marketing plan you put together for a listing doesn't have to be overly complicated. And and sometimes it's just and it's just those simple things and recognizing like okay, your girlfriend's looking for a house and she's going to Redfin. Well, that's a buyer behavior pattern. And so if you study. 10 or 20 buyers and you see the actions that they're taking they're all doing but essentially the same thing exactly yeah and and that's how we formulate marketing around it because at the end of the day if you want to sell a home quickly you can sell a home without pictures it happens every single day whether it's right or wrong it's a whole other question but every single day listings sell with iphone pictures and the problem is is that there's potential buyers that may pass up your property because of those iPhone pictures. And so, you know, visually showing off that property to as many people as possible that are in the market at this particular time that your listing hits the market, that's the game. That's what marketing is, is to create that awareness. So we're looking to take advantage of every opportunity when you have eyeballs on that listing. And sometimes you may get someone that's searching and this this happens a lot. Let's say you get the sometimes with real estate investors, they want to get the property on the market right now, like yesterday. Um, they had me scheduled to go out there like on a Tuesday or Wednesday, and you know that's, I, that was the earliest I can get out there. Um, but they had the mar- the property on the market all uh, all that weekend and stuff, and you know nothing. They had no activity. They got the pictures on, and they did an open house the following weekend, and it sold, and then it, it just sold this last week, and they got a contract on it. Nice. But but the problem is though is that every day and every week and every month. Like that property sits on the market. You're accruing list time, listing yeah. market. Time. Not only that, but if if you're as you know as an investor, you're paying, you know, at least a, you know hundred dollars yeah. a day when the for house is just sitting there. Right. Yeah, for the holding costs. So so now um, so now so this is where this is where it gets kind of tricky. You, you every day counts, and so um, you know if you have shitty pictures on there and just half-ass marketing, then what happens is that. There's people that really might actually like that house, but they if they can't see it online, the presentation is just not done yeah. correctly. And like you said, I mean, when you see a listing that that's been on the market for a while, and even if there's nothing wrong with it, it's a beautiful, perfect house, and it it you know, and it's and that's what all the buyers it makes you do. wonder if there's something wrong with the house. Yeah, and, and that's that's what all the buyers are doing. So I mean, in that scenario, would you suggest instead of you know forcing um, getting the listing up? Uh, as soon as possible with bad pictures, hoping you can get, you know, find a buyer before you get the right pictures up to even yeah. like wait two weeks and then put up like great well, pictures. Yeah. Well, well, like, you definitely want to be pre-marketing the property and, and we definitely get into that too. Um, like you should be marketing the property all the way from the day construction starts. There should be some plan in place to start marketing that property. Uh, because right now, pretty much anywhere in the country at the time we're recording this, there's tight inventory everywhere. So the so right now everything is really comes down to price, you know, like um, because the banks uh, they're not allowing borrowers to really you know push up market prices, right? Uh, we're not seeing big increases in market prices. We're kind of seeing things not flatline, but but we're not seeing the increases we saw a couple of years ago in in terms of pricing. So pricing still is a, a really crucial marketing factor, but that market time is going to have a diminishing that has to be fixed and stuff like that. So you got to keep uh, you got to keep the the listing agent, whoever that is, and the photographer. You got, they all have to be on standby and ready to get in there as soon as possible and stuff. Um, and then, but if it takes a day or two, then let that let that process happen so that when you start marketing it fully, you you go out the gate like presenting that property to everyone in the in that marketplace that's looking and and that's how you're going to maximize the exposure because the best time to sell the house is always in the first two weeks that's when you have the most eyeballs on the property and so you want to make the most of that time that's also when you know if your your property is priced correctly mm-hmm. usually if you if yeah. we don't get an offer within the first two weeks we know that it's either 
and like if it's being marketed correctly like you know with pictures and video and everything but okay. if we don't get any bites within those first two weeks it's yeah obviously overpriced yep yeah and, and pricing is is a, a, a factor to marketing and and yeah and and but you'll never get to that point you know like you'll get to that point quicker rather if you are marketing it correctly right from the beginning so like um, or or um, or putting bathroom towel bars up you know all those little details it's all, all about matter. presentation I mean yeah. even when you go to the, the grocery store right if it's literally the same product yeah. same price you're gonna pick the one that feel you know quote unquote feels better yeah. to you just because it was presented in a better way yeah. right yeah yeah you absolutely are so, so as you know as far as you know talking about pre-marketing because it, I kind of want to get into that a little bit because you know as an investor as an investor like obviously the faster we sell the house the better since we're paying you know sometimes with yeah. hard money you're paying 100 150 dollars a day yeah. um how are you how, like what can you do to pre-market a property so because like, you're talking about pre, you know starting yeah. to market you know as soon as the construction starts yeah what would you say would be a good way to pre-market a property so um one of the things in marketing a lot of things change so up until about six months ago from us recording this, Zillow was one of the biggest things we used to use to pre-market a property. We, an agent used to be able to uh, manually input a listing into Zillow and because Zillow is the number one search available here in Illinois or in northern Illinois with Chicago, uh, they call it, uh, it's, a, it's a pre-marketing thing that you can enter that listing in there, right? Which is something that you, you, all agents have to do. But we use the MLS as part of the way. Now on Zillow, we can still use Zillow, but whoever whoever the listing agent is going to be on the property, that agent is going to have to have a premier agent account, which is something you have to pay for. So now that, that becomes a thing about pre-marketing on Zillow. So we still use Zillow, but not all agents have a premier agent account. Like uh, a premier agent account with Zillow? Yeah, with Zillow, right. Uh, because if you have a premier agent account, then they'll allow you to put a pre-marketed property on its platform. Which is still valuable, but now now the question that the investor is going to have is, does your agent, whoever you're using, do they have a premier agent account so that they can start pre-marketing your listing on that platform? And Zillow is going to be the one you want to use because Zillow is the number one most trafficked website. It's still uh, listed to this day, right? Yeah. It, like, uh, Zillow is like at 38 million hits per month. They get on their estate, gets all their listings data from Zillow. And just like Trulia, because... Uh, truly is owned by Zillow truly gets all their listing data from Zillow so it so sounds like you sh should be working with the, like if you're an investor well, you should be working with a uh, agent that is you know premier agent through yeah. Zillow yeah you almost you I mean I don't see how you cannot do it and for me I like I'm not a fan of Zillow but it doesn't matter whether I like them or hate them or anything like that it's just that they have the traffic yeah that's and, all that, that honestly that's all yeah. that matters if they got the traffic you you know you have to be on there right I mean and, are most are most agents have the premier account or is that like a big cost to them or it, it's a cost so um, not all agents have it uh, because basically you have to buy zip code ads through through Zillow to have this so-called premier agent account and so um, you know for the listing agent there's no doubt it's a cost of doing business and it definitely sucks so um, uh, I think that's one thing to consider has for a real estate investor has your choosing your agent I'm not saying that you you drop an agent because they don't have one but um, if you want to seriously pre-market a property we don't have that many opportunities out there to pre-market a property online listings occur within the top 10 real estate search websites and I'll give you those so you can put them in the show notes but that's um so then as a, as a marketer and as a listing agent and as an investor, you want your property to be shown uh, where, where web, the web traffic's at, where people are actually looking. Because no one goes past page one of a Google or a Bing search. So it's whatever pops up in that first page and most likely whatever pops up in the first uh, three to five results that they're going to be. Picking. I'll be honest, I cannot remember the last time I went to the second page on Google. Yeah, it, it doesn't uh, unless Maybe you're. Either. Yeah, <laughs> unless you're looking for something that's really specific, you know, um, you know, like maybe you're trying to learn like how to um, how to make your own uh, coconut raisin bagels or something like that. You know, like something real, yeah. real specific. But, but yeah, you, uh, no one goes past that. So um, Zillow gives us that kind of opportunity to get the property in the market. Now, so that's one part of it. Then the other part is, is traditional, more of a traditional route, which is signage. And signage is a big deal because 
we know that buyers today are still doing drive-bys. They're, they're still driving through neighborhoods. They're looking for pro that property is for sale. Uh, it's traditional and old school, but it still works. Yeah, right now we're putting a four foot wide by eight feet tall sign in the front yard. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. That's as big as you can go in Chicago. Mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, it's giant. Yeah, those are that's a perfect size it's for giant. A new construction. And I've sat outside, you know, just on the phone sometimes, just in the car. And every person that walks by reads it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or every person that drives by looks at it. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it definitely it, works. Yeah. And you have to let people know that it's for sale. And nothing does it better than a good old fashioned, like a good sign, not an H frame, but it's got like, you know, if you can do like a big sign like that, or at least the very minimum, put a sign post on there with the sign. But yeah. you've got to have, uh, you got to have it, you have to communicate it to the rest of the world that it's available. So as far as working with agents, because um, you do public speaking gigs and you, you wrote a book on how to yeah, on market listings. right on this, this exact topic, what is it that you do different that when you go and speak, a lot of people don't kind of, it feels like a foreign language to them. Like, what is it that you teach them on how to market the properties correctly? Well, we talk to get phone calls to come in to the, to the brokerage because people were going into their phone book, but that doesn't happen anymore. Today, the agent is uh, the agent now has to generate their own leads and um, if they want to be successful and so that means the agent has to also become a marketer and the problem that that I see at least in my opinion is that when it comes to marketing there's a lot of trainers and a lot of speakers and a lot of gurus uh, and coaches and all this kind of stuff but they're not really teaching you how to be better at marketing what they're usually teaching you is a system and it's going to be like, here, buy, um, buy my Facebook marketing system and get 10 listings in the next three weeks if you do this, this, and this, and pay me $999. And they're probably not even doing some of the marketing themselves. No. Well, that's just the thing. Like I always tell agents, like the next time you, you want to buy a, a marketing system or, or, or buy into a coach or whatever, if it's a coach or whatever, and they're selling you Facebook, go to their Facebook page and see how they're marketing and see like make the judgment call for yourself because in most cases a lot of these guys i don't see them doing anything on social media next event you do have it on your website <laughs> i got it on my website but but like but that's but also an online press it's an online presence yeah right yeah I put, I mean, if you're good people come to you they come to you yeah they, they come to you so you can go talk so so then like um so I, I just don't see like people i don't see anyone teaching agents how this works and then when it comes to those numbers those stats Usually when, I, when I'm in a classroom with agents and we're talking about listings marketing and I'm telling them that the number, the top three websites in the world all belong to Zillow basically. Not Yahoo doesn't belong to Zillow, but all the listings on Yahoo are Zillow's. They, most of them never heard that. Most of them still think that, that Realtor.com is still at least number two. You know, and, and so sometimes you search on Andrews and the real realer dot com link doesn't even come up until like the fifth result. Yeah. Either Zillow or Redfin is on top. Right. So so a lot of agents just like that information isn't being communicated out there. And so um, and the same thing happens with when it comes to pictures. When it comes to the pictures, it's an investment. Like someone's gotta pay for it and usually it's gotta be the agent. And unfortunately for a real estate agent, um, they don't get paid until that house closes. So they have a lot of time. Cool, and that's fine. But um, but the problem is that now you've got uh, agents out there that believe that. Well, listen, I don't have to offer. I, I I'm trying to offer the most minimum amount of service that I can for my client. So um, so that kind of attitude is out there. You know, um, I mean, that's the wrong way to go about it. It is. It's the wrong way to go about it. But like you know, like you have to show agents the way. And so like the brokerages, even there's a lot of brokerages out there that they don't understand this stuff. Um, and so it's not being taught, you know? And so like, so my job when I go out there speaking and talking to agents is to show them how you build a brand and how you build your business by delivering a better quality service to your clients. And part of that is having an actual plan to sell the, the property. Right. To be honest, like when we, like, you know, as investors, when we're, when we're choosing an agent, we want them to have, to have access to somebody who does, who does videos, who does pictures. Yeah. Even now, to, who does Matterport. Yeah. 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 And, and so like a lot of them, it, a, lot, a lot of it comes down to money and the investment. And there's a lot of agents out there that. There's some agents that they believe it, and they, they that you took it off your website too. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, 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 I bring the business into me because like when people see those photos, they when the ones that are the ones that are serious about it, 
they're going to call the listing agent and be like, who took those pictures? Because I need pictures like that. And so like, like who took this that you could actually see outside the window. Yeah. 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 So, so <laughs> that's so honestly, no that's, glare. that's probably the coolest thing that I've seen from your pictures is like, yeah. you could actually see outside the window and me and, you know, I've been into photos. I've been taking pictures for a while mm -hmm. and that's like, when I see like beautifully done pictures and videos, it's just a huge plus for me. Yeah. Cause you have to show like in just in those window views, when someone's viewing that property online, they are, they're in the hunt. You know, and so they're in search mode and when they're in search mode, they're looking through a lot of properties and they may be looking through properties on the way to work when they're in the train, when they're driving or at work, at work, when they're in the bathroom, when they're making dinner for the kids, like they're searching on their time and they're going fast. And so you've got to grab their attention and nothing grabs their attention more because they're not going to realize for in real life your eyes can see past the window. <laughs> right, it's not just gonna be a huge white right. bright light. Mm -hmm. And so the other problem on the real estate side is that for the, we have we have realtors now that re, that actually believe in photos and they, they purchase it. They're buying photography work, right? From, from photographers all over. But there's a lot of real estate photographers out there that won't do that like, just like the same problem. They won't put that extra work into creating a, a, a photo that gives you that kind of visual. They just they just drop the camera in the room and take a photo and put the flash on and that's it. But but really that, that the photo is not done. You've got to edit the photo and make it look a certain way. Yeah, but that's go that goes back to like if you're giving the minimum value for the amount of money, you're not gonna get any referrals. Right. What well, we right? It, yeah. it, it's just like when you know for us like working with some contractors, right? Like. They just want to make as some just want to make as much money on one project, yes. you know, that one time. Right. They're not looking at it as like, oh shit! If I give them a good price and a good job, they might give me five more jobs. So I want to. As an investor, you know, you're trying to align yourself with good contractors, good attorneys, good all these strategic partnerships that you need. And real estate agents have to do the same thing. And so, like, part of like what I do is like I have to educate real estate agents on what actually is a good photo because there's like what the kind of stuff I do there's like the kind of stuff I do is regarded as high end you know or I'm doing the quotes like high end or only for luxury listings but really like every house deserves to have really good photos of it you know whether it's a, a $55,000 condo or a $500,000 uh, single family this might be a, a little nerdy and like the photography side just because I'm really into it but how do you get the view outside of the pictures when you take them is it photoshopped yeah. or is it like do you do like a HDR type where you take like multiple exposures and you have to point you have to point the flash directly into the windows uh, you have to um, you have to then turn your shutter speed up to 125 bring your ISO to about 400 I usually go full power with the flash and I put a photo. Then you got to take that photo you edited and you got to take the photo that you took the window shot of. And you take both those photos into Photoshop and you just take out the old window that's whited out because it's been blown out and you replace it with that window that you took. So it's honestly, it's it takes time. not that much. Like speaking, it's really not like you're not going way out of your way to no. do that. But it's just that little bit that makes your pictures stand out that mm -hmm. much more. It's the same way like if you're rehabbing and you've got a wall between the family room and the dining room and you know you gotta take it down because you gotta open that thing up. Yeah, you but know? then you gotta redo the draw you know, you gotta yeah, you gotta but, knock but, it down, reroute maybe the HVAC, the electric mm -hmm. and but, you know. but the right thing in most cases is to tear down that wall. So like, you know, because you know, everyone wants open floor plans. So like most a lot of the times you guys are tearing down walls. And but you're you're doing that because if you're if you're just going to if you're just going to gut it, but leave all the walls exactly where they were before and re drywall everything and all that stuff. Most likely that layout from 1954 isn't a layout that's going to work for a family in 2000 level of service that they're going to offer you. Now, you can definitely sell a house without all that service. But, you know, what, but what makes but, you know, what that's the difference between an agent who's serious about building a business 
that you know produces referrals and grows year after year and an agent who's just constantly struggling because they're doing the bare minimum so they're not really offering anything special i mean it's really about just not cutting corners and taking that extra step to get the most value possible and get the top dollar amount mm -hmm. and then you just it's just a small investment because then you you build and build and you know build that relationship yeah and you get more clients and more jobs from you know because you know investors aren't like you know one-time home buyers you know we do repeat yeah. business so if we have a realtor that does good for us we're going to use them over and over again mm -hmm. yep so it's just but uh, i feel like a lot of people just kind of look past that and they're just like we were saying people just want to make a lot of money with the least amount of value on like one house and then move on to the next one instead of building that relationship and they're missing like a you know a good segment of the market by doing that yep yeah. and trading a quick buck for you know a, 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 maybe a lifetime relationship yeah yeah so exactly so you know i think like gary vaynerchuk says you know he the events for free and i do a lot for that are paid but um those free ones i do uh there's no money in it you know it takes a lot of time and um that's time that i could be spending with uh, my girlfriend or working or doing something else but you're looking for ways to deliver value so you can build relationships I mean, it's the same thing with us. We do property tours. We, we do case studies on the, some of the properties that we do just to show people who are just getting started and how it is that we do things and show them what's possible if you put a lot of time into it. Yep. We don't get paid. Yeah. Like at all. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, we do get sponsors to pay for a lot of this stuff, but we also help those sponsors get their yeah. name out there, right? Yep. So it's the, same, it's the same kind of thing. So like when you're looking for the real estate agent, um, in a perfect world, you, you need to build one that you can build a relationship with so that as your business grows, their business grows. And you want them to grow. You want them to be successful. You want them to make money. But you want ones that, that know how to reinvest into their business, reinvest into their professional skills, reinvest into their marketing, and then also build relationships like one with their photographer. Third. And all, yeah. Uh, and is is. Pretty much all these. Is that all you do? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like, is that what you're pretty much focusing on? Yeah. Now? Like, I, what's what's next for you? I guess is what I'm trying to get to. Is to get to every real estate agent in the country. So like, so we've been doing a lot of work with the Women's Council of Realtors, and we're trying to we're trying to help that organization grow. And uh, you know, my job is to basically get you know we've we've definitely gone outside Chicago to deliver this message. And so the what we're trying to do is. is is train every single real estate agent on how to do listings marketing, how to do Facebook, uh, how to do all these things digitally, all the things that I was looking for when I was still an agent, but I couldn't find. And I just want to give agents like the opportunity to be able to, to get that training without any BS, without any upselling, without any $997 products or anything like that. Uh, just good, hardcore training. And, um, and I think like when it comes to the videos, the virtual tours and stuff like that, I want, I, I want everyone to learn how I do virtual tours so that they can ever, so that I think every office in the country should have a guy like me that's employed that is part of their, part, yeah, we have a Matterport and we do those and the Matterport is really just, it, it's really only for the sellers that for, for a buying tool, um, it, the Matterport's phenomenal technology, but it's about, it, it's ahead of itself. So like the, the part that's missing with Matterport is the way to actually view it. Matterport is, it really is virtual reality. But the problem is that in virtual reality is that we don't have a way to go through virtual reality. It's just not there yet. Yeah. Maybe in 10, 15 years it, it, it might be there. Yeah, but it's, not it's now. 5, 10, or 15 years. Like it's not, we're not there yet. But, as a, but for, a, for a listing agent, if you want to be serious about listings, it make homeowners love the idea of a 3D tour. Now, it does work if it's like an out-of-town buyer an overseas buyer, which, you know, that happens sometimes. So if it's a buyer that physically just can't actually see the house, but they have to buy a house in that area, it works. But um, but all these kind of tools, every brokerage should be doing them. The problem is, like, going back to the agents, uh, whether it's the big box brokerages out there or mom and pops, the far majority of brokerages out there have no idea how to properly market a listing. And they're not gishing that you put on a tripod and it captures all the details of every room in a property and it builds a 3d model of the property so that you could go through every room in this thing um you could do it on your computer or through a smartphone you know but using a mouse or on your smartphone using your fingers but it it will show you a very vivid very detailed uh account of every room lets you spin around it and do 
do little whirlwinds, 360 whirlwinds through it. So it, it's really, really cool technology because you can you really can't experience it. The problem is that when you're viewing it from a computer or from your phone, though, is that you have to press this little circle to get from one room to the other. And it's kind of like playing like a 1980s Atari game. It's just sort of slow and clunky, you know. But but the visual part of it, it's very detailed. It's, it gives you a, a, a really good knowledge of what the layout feels oh, like yeah. without having to go to the house yeah yeah it really does so it, it's it's very cool technology and and see these are all the things that are coming um so like um i tell real estate agents and, and broker owners that like you know it, I, I have this sort of line i took from Mary Vane was that listen people want to view the property online so we have to give the potential buyer the prospect all the opportunities to be able to feel, view, and experience that property online. Because it's all about convenience, right? I mean, I guess we're kind of talking about this, but, you know, as far as convenience goes, you know, Uber, yeah, Postmates in Chicago, I don't know if they have it in the suburbs, but it, you could pretty much order anything. Yeah. Like, you could order a six-pack of beer from the liquor store at two blocks away if you mm -hmm. wanted to. Yeah, yeah, well, I, we can get, Am there's Amazon stuff comes the same day now for a lot of people. So, like, yeah, it's the same thing. You have to... People want to see it now, and they want to see as much as they can. We still have, there's a broker, I won't name the brokerage, but there's a brokerage here in, in Chicago, in the suburbs, that they actually, the broker owner, does not allow his agents to put like more than five pictures of a listing. And his, How are you supposed to show the house? He, well, uh, this broker owner's rationale for that is that if we only give them a little preview of the property, it will force them to want to call us. Liberty experience. So, as a real estate investor, your job is to you know find good partners in in terms of real estate agents uh, that are are serious about making sure your property is being showcased. So, you know all those features that you put into the house, all the lighting, the hardwood floors, the the nice kitchens and the bathrooms you did. You know you want really good visuals so you so someone can see the beautiful work that you've done and all the money you've invested into it and they can see like they have to be able to see like wow this place is really fixed up yeah the hours that i usually spend picking out the tile uh -huh. for you know just a half bath and 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 t to not show it online and to not show the property online or give people the opportunity to, to show it because you know because you're using an iphone for your pictures no, it's a it's a real it's a it's a wasted opportunity i guess so i have noticed that you started doing a lot of virtual staging lately yeah, um, yeah. what are you what are your thoughts on that so i mean it's obviously a whole lot cheaper than getting uh, yeah being paid for a stage paying for a staging company yeah so so virtual staging is really interesting to me and um and and this is probably a really important rule of marketing um, in marketing, you never know everything. So I always never seen virtual reality staged furniture or virtually staged furniture in a house. I'd never seen it done where it, it, it really enhanced uh, the viewership yeah, online. The technology just wasn't there or what was it? I, I, maybe the, it, I think maybe part of it was the technology wasn't there. But then also, I think at a certain point, I stopped looking into it. But I mean, then, it's also like, what is it? Uh, camera and waited to make avatar 2 because the technology oh, wasn't yeah. there right right so it's, right sometimes so, you just kind of have to it, wait you have to wait a little bit and and what i saw the, this last year i have several clients that they started uh taking my photos and getting them virtually staged through like there's several companies out there um and um and i saw the results they were getting from the virtually staged photos and and all my clients one of the best things of what i do is that my clients are really open with me telling me about their their listings you know I mean, we geek out about this stuff so they're telling me what's working what's not working they're telling me about what buyers are saying what their homeowners are saying and all this data I'm taking in and processing it and we're making adjustments in our marketing constantly so the um, uh, one of the biggest things that happened for us in 2017 was that I had three clients virtually staged um, it uh, when I saw its work and we saw it work several times then we started experimenting so over the summer uh, we virtually staged I think like 50 houses so I invested like uh, it's a lot of money we invested because it costs like 32 bucks a picture and we did it like five pictures per house so however I, I'm not good at math so whatever that is it's like <laughs> it's, 160 bucks yeah per house or something like that yeah so which is not bad I mean we paid a few thousand yeah. dollars for staging alone yeah. but, we, yeah. but we did it like on 50 houses Right. So, so like whatever. <laughs> that's a lot of hours. Yeah, it's a lot of. We spent a shit ton of money on it this summer, and we, um, but we experimented the same way I experimented when we built the marketing plan. 
the listings marketing plan. And we saw the results. And then now when we, now that I've got the results and the results are positive, now I, I do encourage that. I think it's a really good opportunity. So here's why I tell real estate investors. If you have the budget for real furniture, real staging furniture, not the furniture from your living room, but real staging furniture, then do it. But if the budget isn't there, then you got two options. The first option is a half stage, half virtually a do or I'm sorry, real stage it, not virtually stage it, but then go to your bedrooms and your basements and virtually stage those rooms. Yeah, because when you're doing an op open floor plan like we've been doing, a lot of the time it's it, it's very hard for people to see how an open floor plan comes oh, yeah. together. Right. Yeah, where really the where's gonna couch gonna be, where's the dining room gonna be. Yep. So it because there's no walls to separate room from room, right? Mm -hmm. So like, I mean, what we've done in the past, we just staged uh, living room, dining room, kitchen, maybe the breakfast area. And in the bedrooms, we do some minimal stuff. Yeah. But we don't do the basement. We yeah. don't do, like, the rooms that you don't necessarily have to do. Yeah, so... Um, and that's why I like the idea of virtual staging. Yeah, so it, it, it can be used as a hybrid approach. Like, you don't have to do either or. You can, Like yeah. you said, you can do half of one, half the other. Yeah, it, we found good results when we do the hybrid approach. And then we've had some houses where there's just no budget for it. And so we virtually stage those. Um, but what we do is, and when we virtually stage a room, so we'll take the family room. We, I always have the realtor, they'll put both photos, the photo without any furniture and the photo with the furniture in it. Oh, so si side by the feeling. Right, because they get an idea of how the room c could be used yep. or how where they can put their couch or their TV or what kind of couch yeah. is going to fit in that exact room. Mm -hmm. and, and so it, it was visually stimulating. And then that way they knew that when they got to the house, they understood that there wasn't real furniture in it, you know. And so um, when we put those pictures side by side and then the company that we're using, and this isn't a plug, like I don't get any money from them. I, I just, this is the company I use for all my virtual staging now. It's called BoxBrownie.com. It's uh, two Australian guys. In, um, and one, Box Brownie? Yeah, Box Brownie. Uh, they're two Australian guys. One guy's a real estate photographer like myself. The other guy is a former real estate agent like myself too. Uh, but then they, um, they're just into this stuff. So I, I send all my work out to those guys. Um, I, don't make, I don't make any money from referring them. I tell people about them because that's who I use and I like to share the resources. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, I've definitely been, been thinking about it because like you said, sometimes you just, as an investor, you just don't have the budget yeah. to do regular, regular staging. And every hundred dollars that you spend on on the rehab, that's hundred dollars that you don't make. It's getting shrinked, um, you know. I want to do staging, but I can't always do it. Will can I pay you some money to go with me to Home Goods and pick out items for you know, and so I can buy a whole bathroom set and some kitchen sets. And you could do also like, um, you know, a, a good stager will say, sure, you know, give me some money. We'll go over there. We'll buy a set. Then you buy one of those big plastic totes from Target or Walmart or whatever. And then you pack up like, you know, because for you guys, you guys are usually in the same kind of color scheme, right? You kind of like, you know, whether you, a lot of times a lot of your properties are going to have grays same and what, paint. yeah, same paint and so that. So, you know, you buy a couple different color bedroom set, uh, uh, sets for a bathroom and kitchen like accent pieces and you can have and then when you when that property is ready you just go to you take the tote from your house bring it to there and you have the wife or the stager or yourself uh, set up these things in the bathrooms and kitchens and uh, we do and we I call that half staging and uh, I have a lot of real estate agents that um, they have they list properties for their investors where there's no budget for staging but they'll virtually stage and They'll do this half staging to the kitchen, all the kitchen. You had your guys install the kitchen. You picked out, like you said, you picked out the colors, right? Well, I, I, you know, most rehabbers do a good job of picking out nice colors and making things pizzazz and boom and all that stuff. But the problem is, is that the buyer can't really see all those details that you did, right? You have to, you have to visually stimulate the buyer's eyes a little bit. So we use accent pieces on like the tile. Uh, behind the tile backsplash or on the granite countertops to help pull out those colors of those items. So that's why you see stagers use like reds and blues. And when you when you see the fake fruit in the in a kitchen and like they have like fake oranges and apple, green apples, those colors are being used very specifically because they're there to help draw out the features of the kitchen. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we I choose a lot of very neutral colors, a lot of whites, grays. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, kind of just whatever is in right now. <laughs> that's yeah. what we most usually do. 
and uh, the stager that we've worked with uh, you know she she can usually pick out colors that are really gonna make those finishes yeah. pop yeah so so buy all those little details help out tremendously awesome man you know I just wanted to thank you for coming on the podcast uh, we're coming close to an hour here uh, I wanted to ask you where could people find you and you know where can brokers and other investors find your information so they can hire you to do either pictures or videos or yeah. kind of or maybe other real organizations can reach out to you so you can come out and speak about helping you know agents market properly yeah. so i have two websites so uh, my main website is agentredefined.com and that website is where i that's where my blog is at that's where uh, my podcast is at and that's where i put all my marketing training uh, everything I talk about, I kind of write articles and make videos about all these subjects and put them out there for free for everybody. And then for the photo video work, um, I only work by referral with uh, with agents. And so um, I have a site that's just for the photo and video work. And that's a same domain, but agentredefinedmedia.com. And that's where and that, now I kind of put all the photo work there so that I kind of hide it almost a little bit because I only want certain realtors. Is it because you got two? And um uh, and then they, but they know how to use their listings marketing to grow their business so that if they can use what I have, these awesome visuals, if, if I can give them an edge in their marketing so that they can uh, stand out more, then they have a better chance of becoming bigger themselves. And then those are the kind of agents I'm looking for. Awesome. And I'll put, uh, I'll put those links on the show notes. I uh, just wanted to, you know, thank you for being on the podcast. And uh, um, till next time, guys. Yeah, thanks, George. There's a lot of really good information. Yeah, thanks, guys. Awesome. Hey, guys, this is Ricardo again. Before you head off, just a few more things. First off, just want to thank you for listening to the podcast. Hope you enjoyed it. Second, for show notes and links, please head over to profitsoverwages.co. And on the next episode of the podcast, we sit down with real estate developer Arpan Patel and talk about buying financing and building a rental property portfolio lastly please don't forget to subscribe and rate us on itunes not only do we read every single review but positive reviews also help us reach more people until next time